uh, like a virgin, or in this case, like a mistrusting brother not telling the other one pretty essential facts that they should know. But unlike the song, they will touch on this again, and again, and again, and again. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Just Like a Virgin, episode 12 of Supernatural, season 6, and now before I go into a big tirade about the illogical factor that is Dean's thinking with Sam's soul here. I actually have to give this season credit for having one of the better mid-season returns. Like, this is actually a pretty decent episode, except for one big dumb fucking thing. I have to admit, I maybe should apologize to the latter seasons for using the trope of the brothers not trusting each other, withholding something from each other, because the first instance of it happening post seasons one through five is one of the worst examples I can think of. The idea that Sam is upright and that Dean does not want to mention anything to him, but he for some reason thinks that Sam will not figure out anything despite the fact that he has been around and walking and talking with a lot of other people that they know for a year. And on top of that, he leaves his brother to, to the wind to go off and find a magical sword, but doesn't bother to tell anyone aside from Bobby, not even Castiel, not even the uncle, no one at all that, hey, I don't want this information known. Dean's the biggest fucking bonehead here. Anyone and everyone in the writer's room must have seen how stupid this was. <laughs> literally solved at the end of the episode and it has nothing to do with the really quick resolution formula that we've come to know for supernatural because all sam has to do is call castiel he does one thing out of the two people that he talked to getting this part out of the way with first because this episode actually isn't that bad aside from the giant piece of dipshit dumbass writing that is Dean's logic about trying to keep Sam out of the loop. And I understand his want to protect Sam because, as Death said, any scratching at the wall could lead to its downfall, but he does absolutely nothing in terms of trying to stop any of it. He's just kind of like, oh, I don't want it this way, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Why did this happen? The fact that Sam is the way he is and he gets right back up again and the first thing he wants to do is go on a hunt. I I don't like that aspect of this episode. I do like what it leads to. Now I understand the episode has to proceed to introduce the mother of all, which they do very well, but I feel that maybe they should have left it for an episode because just the very casualness that Sam is like, yeah, sure, let's get back to things. I've been in hell for a year. I am pretty casually laid back about being topside again. Hey, you're going on a hunt? Sure. I don't care about doing anything else that I never thought I'd be able to experience again. I don't want to see anyone. Let's do the very thing that got me into this fucking mess in the first place. Mmm, this logic with Sam going on a hunt immediately after getting topside doesn't make any fucking sense, no matter how much you try to spin it. They should have spent an entire episode with just Sam here. Obviously, he's going to realize, hey, I don't remember shit. That seems a little weird. Hey, y'all are looking at me weird. That seems a little weird. And as far as we know, Dean never took Sam's cell phone or did anything else. So as far as Sam could tell, He'd be able to pick up a phone and be like, hey, there's all these random text messages that are dated of me like a couple weeks ago and I responded, how the fuck did that happen? There's so many issues with this single piece of the story that I have ranted on for near on six minutes according to the timetable here. Aside from that, the episode itself actually isn't bad. I remember a lot of people not liking this episode for the whole idea of dragons. And yeah, while a guy getting sucked out of the front of a plane doesn't make any sense, it's a TV show, they're very limited with what they do. I actually do like the dragons in it. I think that this episode does have a really good funny bit with Dean going to get the sword out of the stone and music cue and he can't get it out. And And then he blows up the rock and in the end 
he breaks the sword. I thought that part was really, really good. Again, don't understand why he went off to get a sword and didn't bring Sam with him because he just left Sam alone to do nothing. Except to realize that sewers are the equivalent of caves. Mm, I don't know how he didn't figure that out. I do like when they go to save the girls and the dragons have the fight. I thought that part was really good. And then I love how the episode ends with the dragons throwing the girl off into the pit and then the book of human skin kind of giving this really cool foreshadowing to the mother of all villain which we were all going to be very sorely disappointed by. I thought this was a decent build up for a villain and then when Sam does find out, while I did rant about it, I will give this one good credit. I do find it quite ingenious that Sam apologizes for how his soulless self acted when he does find out that he has been walking around without a soul for a year. I think that was a good play back into the morality of what makes Sam Winchester what he is. He's not mad that he was bamboozled and lied to by Bobby and Dean. He in fact understands why and he wants to make right for what he did even though it wasn't really him. That part does make up a little bit for the idiocy that did start this episode off. It's more so Dean's lacking effort to actually try and keep it secret that bugs the ever-loving shit out of me when you know, you know he's gonna figure it out. And again, that probably opened up the gateway for why they would use this same distrusting story arc over and over and over again throughout the show's lineage. But so while from that big ass fucking negative, the episode still does have a decent return and a overall good arc. It has good pacing, it has a cool little villain in it, it has a cool build up to a big bad that will eventually let us all down, but it's still well placed. It's actually a pretty well put together episode. It just has a fucking dumb ass brick of writing the size of a goddamn pyramid. So in the end, I'm gonna give this episode a four out of seven. It's Eh, it, it, even with all the detractors of this episode, it's still one of the better returns, a mid-season finale return anyways. I don't know if we're going to get that lucky as the show goes on. I know that we definitely did not after season 11. Hell, season 11's mid-season return sucked, so we'll see. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Let's see what you guys had to say. Kind of wondering if you're going to talk about the same thing as me. All right, and it certainly seems that you guys had a lot of complaints about the dragons. I remember watching this episode and hearing that they would have dragons in it. I was so excited to see what dragons would look like and then got disappointed and they turned out to be humans with giant claws and don't even see them fly. Great one-liners, though. What makes a virgin... What make... What... What's like virgins and gold? I don't know. P. Diddy. Didn't age well, but still funny. Like a Virgin is a decent opener after the mid-season. Always makes me laugh when Dean calls Bobby and goes, What do you know about dragons? Nothing. Well, you could you make a few calls to... To who? Hogwarts? I also like when Dean gets a diary and then they maybe say they're all virgins. He gets the diary. Hey, dude, you can't hear that. Uh, you can't read that. The cliffhanger at the end is cool with the mother of all and they've got a new villain fight. I do like how they introduced her, obviously, though, but... Unfortunately, we know where it goes. Uh, like a Virgin is a good mid-season comeback. It feels felt cathartic to have real Sam back, uh, with his relationship with Dean normal again. Although the loss of Sola Sam is definitely felt. Curious to hear your thoughts on the Mother of All storyline. It seemed like a good direction to take the story in at the time, and I've always felt like Eve could have been a big bad, and she was an interesting addition to the mythology, but she was very underused. And looking back, comes off as a show's attempt to have a villain similar to Lucifer in terms of scale and danger, but without the proper buildup and display of her power what do you think no a hundred percent she definitely gets that lucifer kind of sort of vibe but she doesn't do anything with it they don't do anything with her like she's gonna be gone soon she doesn't even get half of a season length to be properly introduced as a threat like a Virgin pretty much showcases how I feel about season six. At least 40% of the episodes in the season of are, are, as a whole are really solid. I really like the interactions between Sam and Dean. They felt genuine and a natural progression of their characters. I even laughed at when Bobby's memento jokes. However, the rest of the episodes in the season as a whole are bogged down by Sarah Gamble's insistence of thinking that weird monsters are more threatening than angels and demons. And I simply don't buy it. When you promise something as cool as dragons and you just have some guys with awful CGI hands, 
because you don't have the budget to deliver, you shouldn't have done dragons. This episode also introduces one of the worst villains of the show, Mother of All, which is essentially the Mother of All Demons title that Lilith has, only to given to Eth, the first woman. I don't understand shows like Supernatural, Why on Earth, or Lucifer that insist on making poor Eve a villain. I think the idea of her as the original monster, like the mother of all monsters, was a cool idea, but I feel that this should have been introduced very early on. Season 6 is definitely an amalgamation of different ideas and and theories and whatnot, and unfortunately it doesn't pull off in the end. Congratulations Supernatural, you made dragons boring. While the dragons are dull, the episode isn't a total loss. I like the introduction of Ellie, too bad she didn't make it through the season. Uh, I mean, imagine me the Eve. It wouldn't have been handy to have in Purgatory a resident ally in season 7 and 8. Oh no wait, you mean the, the lady who's got the sword. I also enjoy the Excalibur fake out uh, epic heroic music as Dean goes to lift the sword and his deflated fade away when he can't even budget. That is a good part. It is one of my favorite parts of the episode. You know, if you're gonna do dragons and you don't have the budget to do dragons, seriously, these are the lamest dragons I've ever seen. I don't think they even breathe fire, just basic goons. Weird choice. Although this episode does introduce us to an interesting character, at first uh, we think it's Bobby's ex, but she's actually much, much more than that. And that's later on, I guess. Oh, and Eve is here too now. Cool. Yeah, no, the uh, the dragons were definitely uneventful. When they were first mentioned, I was like, well, how do I forget? When they were first mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I was like, how did I forget that there was dragons in Supernatural? And then watching the episode, I'm like, oh, that's why. I was really surprised that Sam had no memory of his past year. I was glad to see the old Sam back. I really found the dragons to be very lame, but I enjoyed seeing Dean struggle to remove the sword. I really enjoyed seeing Kim Johnson and Eric as... Dr. Vyazic. Loved her in Highlander. I was glad to finally get the answers as to who is supposed to be the big bad of season 6. Uh, I think the decision for the writers not to fall back on well-known dilemma of Dean and Sam hiding f f something from each other is very good. By the end of the episode, Sam learns the truth that Dean initially withholds from him. This quickly establishes a new plot for the second half of the season. Sam struggles with the truth. Solid episode. I think the dragons could put on a very disappointing performance, and I don't think a couple of guys in leather jackets can be called dragons. New monsters become rare in the future season. Now, in terms of uh, Sam and Dean keeping shit from each other, I usually get really irritated with that post-season 5, but I will say that it makes sense, at least here, in terms of Dean not wanting to break the wall. Like a Virgin is a great follow-up to episode 11 of season 6 on paper, but visually I'm sure people will say it didn't deliver. But I think it's smart for a visual effects team to focus on the subtleties of dragons rather than go all out. If we saw a full CGI dragon, I feel it would have been laughable. The sci-fi channel shows this to me personally time and time again. Also, I can understand how people in various parts of the world say supernatural misrepresented dragons, but these are more in line with fairy tale dragons who, who kidnap princesses and hoard gold. For me, it makes sense narratively that we don't see the dragon's lore represented. At least we didn't see Sam and Dean going countless hours through a sewer ready to call it quits with Dean say, I guess the princess is another castle. I can kind of see where you're going from here, Joe, but if you're going to introduce something as epic as that, you should at least do something to it. You can have some kind of hidden subtleties to it. Like, they tried, but I feel like they did the very, very poor man's version. Not just in terms of the show's budget, but also in terms of effort. Um, I, it's so forgettable to me. Like I said, I couldn't even remember that they had ever introduced dragons in the show in the first place. However, the best scene from the, come from the episode, and one of the best scenes to come from the post kipkri era, is Dean falling, pulling the sword from the stone, and using C4 to retrieve it. I would have loved to see Castiel pull the sword from the stone and just hand it to Dean, like no big deal, like when Vision... Oh yeah, actually that would have been funny. Uh, would have actually been really funny to see Castiel do that. However, to me it's a good follow-up for Sam and Dean reuniting and seeing Jared being soulful. The use of Bobby and Castiel was properly handled. I love the introduction of Dr. Vizek. And although I wish we had more Cthulhu-like reveal with Eve, it makes sense not on a, for, for budgetary reasons of her not possessing a, hu a virgin human female and for the audience to slowly understand her agenda coming to Earth. Yeah, actually, it was kind of interesting having a Cthulhu-like aspect to the show. Would have liked to have seen a little bit more of that, considering everything about H.P. Lovecraft and uh, Cthulhu, but oh well, you know, get what you get.
All right, now the next episode is Unforgiven. That's episode 13, so make sure to give you guys' comments about that episode, and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Till then, see you guys next week.